I've found in working with a lot of people that when you start to consolidate those, I'll call it old accounts, right? Bringing all those old 401ks and these random IRAs and bringing and rolling them all over into one account, you now have a better picture of what your life looks like financially. And then you can start to align that money with your future financial or retirement goals. Welcome to the Your Life, Your Money podcast with Scott Searins, teaching you how to thrive in life, wealth, and retirement. Welcome to the Your Life, Your Money podcast, where we discuss thoughts, strategies, and actions to help you thrive in life, wealth, and retirement. I'm your host, Scott Searins, also president and financial advisor at Searins Financial Group. And today's show is all about money resolutions. This will be the last show for 2021. Don't worry, we're not going away. We'll be right back in 2022. But end of 2021, what's on your mind? Maybe it's the holidays, but maybe it's also New Year's. New Year's can sometimes mean new goals, new resolutions, new thoughts, new things that you want to get done. If you were to be sitting down at the end of 2022, what would you have to do in 2022 to look back, right? If you're sitting there December 31st, what would have to happen for you to look back and go, wow, this was a really great year? Not only on a personal standpoint, but today is going to be more on that financial standpoint things that you control, right? We, we don't have any sort of control over the stock market. We're not going to be able to look back and go, wow, it was a really great year because of the stock market. We don't know what the stock market's going to do. So again, if you were to kind of you know, be sitting there a year from now, what would make you look back and go, wow, 2022 is a really great year. I took action towards this. I set myself up in regards to this. I did this that is helping my financial picture move in a great direction. So before I talk about some different money resolutions, giving you some ideas, thoughts, strategies, and actions, I thought this would be interesting to go over. And I'm going to talk to you about how I kind of plan for a year. And actually, I'm going to say I don't plan for a year. I plan for 90 days. I think a year is almost way too long to think about sometimes. I mean, look at the year that COVID hit, right? Nobody would have planned on that. That changed everybody's years. So sometimes it's helpful to only plan for the maybe the next 90 days. Maybe the year is, hey, I've got a target to, you know, take some action on my financial picture, but then you just start breaking that down. And and here's why. All right. So let's look at this is from Discover Happy Habits. Dot com discoverhappyhabits.com this is their new year's resolution statistics their 2021 update through 2021 update here we go success and failure rates over the first 6 months regarding new year's resolutions after 1 week 75% are still successful on keeping it 1 week's not too tough right 2 weeks that drops to 71% after 1 month it drops to 64% And after six months, 46% of the people who make a resolution are still successful in keeping it. Again, according to the website, we'll post it in the show notes. I think that's important to understand. And I'm going to tell you here, it says right here, reasons for failure. About one in 10 people who failed said they made too many resolutions. I want you to think about your past. Think about when you've said, boy, here's everything that I'm going to get done in this new year, and then how much of it actually gets accomplished. Folks, I've done this, right? I've gone through, I've created this great list of goals. We'll talk about that word in a second. I've created this great list of resolutions. Here's what I'm going to get done in the next five years. Here's what I'm going to get done in the next one year. And it's this really nice long list. And then maybe a couple of the items happen, right? Because we created too many resolutions, too many goals. And so as I go into this list today, here's one thing that I want you to think about. This was this was kind of a game changer in my life. Instead of looking at it over the next year, right? 365 days is a long time. Maybe your 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 year, which you, your target for the year is that you're going to take action on your your overall financial picture, positive action towards, you know, towards your financial picture. 
And then look at it this way. Instead of setting goals, maybe you've got 90-day projects. And so all of this list that I, I, I go over today, I'm going to go over 10 different money resolutions. Take it and break it down to one thing. There's a really good book actually out there called The One Thing. And it talks about how breaking things down into the one thing that you can do today, the one thing that you can do tomorrow, all of those compound, all of those one things build up. So I don't want you to look at this of, oh, here's what I'm going to do over this next year and throw 10 things out there. Maybe just break it down into the, what is that one thing that you want to get done. And instead of over the next year, give yourself a, a shorter time frame. Here's the one thing I want to get done this month. Or here's the one thing that I want to get done over the next 90 days. My belief is that breaking it down in that manner will really help you make a lot of progress towards your goals and towards your future financial success. Before we get into these money resolutions, I hope that you always find value and benefit in our show. If so, subscribe on your favorite podcast player. Check us out on lifemoneyshow.com. Again, that's lifemoneyshow.com for all things building wealth, reducing your long-term tax picture, and making sure that you're on track to financial independence. Here we go. The 10 money resolutions that you could look at for 2022. And I mentioned earlier, I'm going to say instead of using the word resolutions or goals, if you'd sometimes look at those and go, eh, well, it's a, just a goal or ah, it's just a resolution. I don't have to do it. Maybe call it something different. You know, a lot of times I use the word project. I don't know why. For me, when I make something a project, it just, in my mind, then I really want to get it done. So maybe you say, hey, this is your money project for 2022, or this is your money project for the first quarter of 2022. This is your money project for the next 90 days. Whatever helps you get it accomplished, call it in your mind, whatever you want to. Let's dive in. Most of these are going to be focused on the wealth building side of the spectrum, but there are a few in the event that you have some debt still that's number one, right? If, if we still have some things on the liability side of our net worth statement, number one would say, hey, let's make an extra effort to pay down any sort of debts that you have out there. If you have depreciating debts, a car loan, credit card debt, you name it, now's the time to make that extra effort to pay down those debts. Get them out of your life, get them out of your situation, Folks, if you want to build wealth and set yourself up for financial independence, getting rid of depreciating debts is part of that overall process. So like I said, very little focus on that. Most today is, is on building wealth. But if you do have debts out there, the first and foremost thing I would say, focus on getting rid of any sort of depreciating or high interest rate debts. All right, number two making sure that you got the appropriate rainy day fund in place. You might call it rainy day. You might call it an emergency fund. You might call it a, a reserve fund. No matter what you call it, do you have it in place and is it fully funded? I think COVID was a great example, kind of opened up a lot of eyes to go, whoa, hey, things happen in the job world. Um, unfortunately, some people got laid off. And did you have that reserve there to be able to help you get through a, a tough time if that's what you experienced? It's just important, whether it's COVID, whether it's you're looking for a new job, whether you're an entrepreneur and, and you're working on your own, having that emergency fund in place. I always say when you, when you have that um, emergencies fund in place, it's almost like the emergencies go away because they don't become such a big deal anymore. If you don't have it in place, don't overthink it. What are your monthly expenses? And then just pick, do you want three months? Do you want six months? Do you need one year? Three months is if you're really comfortable at your job. Six months, eh, we're not really sure what's going on in the job world. Maybe if you're an entrepreneur, you're, you know, all of your business is solely based on your own production, then maybe you want a, a one-year emergency fund. Pick a number. Don't overthink it. Just get it done. Get that in place. All right, number three. Now on... To the wealth building aspect. Could you bump up or max out your retirement plan contributions? So when it comes to your 401k or your Roth 401k or 
your IRA or your Roth IRA. Think about what you're doing today and can you add more to your retirement contributions. Folks, there's going to become a day in life, right, where we'll no longer be able to work. We won't have that company paycheck coming in anymore. And so we're going to then rely on what we've saved up to then create our own personal paychecks. And the more that you can put away earlier on in your life or each and every year, right, that's more money that is invested for you that is then growing and compounding in the stock market. So can you bump up what you're contributing if you're doing you know, 5%, can you do 6%? Can you do 7%? If you're maxing it out, well then maybe the next step that you want to think about is starting a non-retirement investment account. You could call that a taxable account or a brokerage account. Start your non-retirement investment account and start contributing to that. Here's the, I'll say the main focus of all of this, automate, 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 meaning set it up for automatic contributions. So if, if you're now beyond the 401ks and the Roth 401ks and you're moving on to a taxable investment account, right? A non-retirement investment account, automate your contribution to that account, set it up. Maybe you're going to contribute $1,000 a month. Maybe it's $500 a month. Maybe it's $5,000 a month, but make that automatic because then once that becomes automatic, once that disappears out of your checking account and goes over into this, you know, retirement savings or investment account, you're then back to living under, you know, what you have from an overall standpoint. It's kind of that save it, forget about it, let it grow for a later date. So what can you bump up if you're already maxed out? Can you start that non-retirement investment account and get that growing for you as well? Automate all of your contributions in, in regards to whatever account that you're utilizing because it just helps you get that process done. You don't have to think about it. It's not like, oh, well, if there's some money left at the end of the year, then I'll put it away because you know what happens. The end of the year comes and then you're like, well, I'd rather spend this on gifts or another trip or another vacation. And then you forget to save it for that future. So automate it. Can't push that enough. All right, let's move on. Otherwise, I'll continue to say the word more and more. The next money resolution is should you do a Roth conversion? Now, this isn't one that you probably want to target in the next 90 days. So it might go on your list and it might be your, your final 90-day resolution or project for 2022. But should you do a Roth conversion? Meaning, should you take money from your IRAs or 401ks pay tax today and get them into the Roth IRA bucket where they will grow tax-free and then you can make all of your withdrawals tax-free. Now, this is one where everyone's situation is completely different. You want to take into account what are your tax rates today? You want to take into account what will your taxable income be in retirement? You want to take into account what do you think taxes and tax rates will be like in you know your future years? This is one where you really want to sit down not only with your tax preparer, but your tax preparer is really looking at last year, what happened last year in your life. But you want to sit down with somebody who does tax planning and financial advising. Maybe you're able to you know, handle this on your own. If so, great. If you're wondering what to do, again, sit down with a team and see if Roth conversions should be part of your 2022 list of projects. Here we go. Number five maybe schedule some time to discuss finances with your spouse. So if you're a married couple listening to this podcast, do the two of you sit down and take time to talk about your overall financial picture? Have you talked about your financial goals? Have you talked about what financial independence means to you? Have you talked about what retirement means to you? Have you talked about what you want to do in retirement or what you want to do when you become financially independent? Have you talked about if a legacy is important to you or not? There's a lot of things financially that sometimes we just become scared to talk about. And maybe it's one of your projects just to set up a monthly conversation with your spouse or an every other week conversation with your spouse. Maybe it's talking about the future, but maybe it's also looking at your financial situation today and saying, okay, here's where we're at from a budget standpoint. Here's how much we've got going out. 
Here's how much we're, we're, we've got coming in. You know, if you need to make some cutbacks, where do you want to make those cutbacks? Having a, a regimented financial meeting can really help a lot of arguments, potential arguments go away. It can also help those potential unknowns that you're just sitting there wondering about the, you know, the, what the other person's thoughts are. Just have that open conversation and just sit down and talk about it. And remember, there's, there's no right or wrong answer in regards to what you want your, your future to look like, but are you on the same page? And so maybe one of your projects is actually taking the time to discuss your overall financial picture together and saying, hey, over the next 90 days, we're just going to sit down every two weeks and we're going to talk about our financial picture. We're going to talk about different aspects of it. We're going to talk about our financial future. We're going to talk about what that means to us, what we want to do, where we want to stay. Um, maybe we want to stay home. Maybe we want to just do more activities. Maybe we want all of our money to go to a charity. Maybe we want to go our money to go to our children. Uh, maybe we want to become more charitably inclined and you know make those contributions. Hopefully, I've provided you a, a bunch of thoughts and ideas just to get started. But that's number five. Sit down, discuss your overall finances with your spouse. All right, let's move on. Number six, when is the last time you reviewed your life insurance? That might be your next 90-day project. Does your life insurance still align with your current life needs? I find that some people have life insurance that aligns with their needs. I've found where there's people that they have insurance where maybe they no longer need it. And then there's also couples where maybe life has changed. Maybe they've recently got married. Maybe now they have children and maybe you're underinsured. So maybe that's your next 90 day project to review your life insurance needs. If something were to happen to you, those that count on your income, would they be okay? Number seven, interest rates are still low. If you haven't looked into it yet and you still have a mortgage, should you refinance your mortgage? This is one where it's a great time still. Interest rates are low. I know that the uh, housing market is very interesting, but if you're you know, looking for a new house, hey, great time because interest rates are low. But if you're just planning to stay home and have you checked out, is there potential long-term savings by you refinancing your mortgage? Not only maybe could you get a lower rate, but could you also get a lower term? And it really is important, right, to compare not only just, hey, what your monthly payment is, but what is that overall interest that you would be paying to the bank? How much of that could you keep in your pocket versus you know, paying it to the bank? So don't just look at that payment. You know, I know a lot of times refinancing the mortgage, you can look at the payment. Oh, did my payment go down? Great. But are you also in the overall picture, setting yourself up to keep more of your money with you and pay less interest to the bank. That was number seven. Here we go. Number eight, maybe your first 90 day project is to update your tax withholdings. You know, at the end of the year with uh, our clients, we do a year end tax strategy and tax planning review. Part of that is we look at what they owed or got refunded from the IRS. So we're looking at, you know, so we're in 2021. So we look at 2020. What did you, did you have to pay the IRS or did you owe money to the IRS? We're doing a tax projection for 2021. Do we have enough money paid in? And if you're somebody that's been making some rather large payments to the IRS when tax time comes and you don't like surprises, then maybe you need to update or increase your withholdings so you don't have those surprises come April, right? So you're focused now on the on your 2022 taxes. And of course, you won't see that tax bill until 2023, but it's the time of year to update those withholdings. Now, if you've been getting thousands and thousands of dollars back from the IRS, maybe it's time to stop giving the IRS a free loan and you want to reduce your tax withholdings. It's a good time just to sit down with your tax preparer, your financial advisor, or if you do all this own, look at your overall tax situation, calculate what's being withheld from all of your different payments that are coming to you. And if everything's on track, great. If you're 
continuously getting surprises, meaning checks, large checks that you got to write out to the IRS. Maybe you want to update it, have a little bit more withheld. And if you're continuously getting thousands of dollars back from the IRS, maybe it's time to update it and stop giving them so much of a free loan. All right, number nine, here we go. Moving on, consolidating your accounts. I find over time that people can collect different things. How about this? In your house, just like my house, I've got this junk drawer, right? And over time, this drawer, it's collected spoons, it's collected tape measures, it's collected playing cards. I mean, you name it, right? It's all in there. How about your financial life? In your financial life organization, or do you have kind of a junk drawer of accounts? So maybe your project is to start consolidating your accounts, to start making sure that your accounts align with your future financial picture, right? Now, and I understand you can't, you know, you can't take your account. Let's just say you have, let's say you've got two people here. You can't take an IRA and put it into a, you know, a taxable account, or you can't take your IRA and combine it with your, your wife or your husband's IRA or your spouse's IRA. But if you have five IRAs, or if you've got five old 401ks, can you bring all of those into your current 401k? Can you roll all of those over into one IRA? So instead of having these similar retirement accounts in all of these different locations, bringing them all into one location and making sure and to help make sure that they're invested along with your future financial direction. I've found in working with a lot of people that when you start to consolidate those, I'll call it old accounts, right? Bringing all those old 401ks and these random IRAs and bringing and rolling them all over into one account. Or maybe you've got old Roth 401ks and Roth IRAs in different locations and starting to bring all of those into one location. You now have a better picture of what your life looks like financially and then you can start to align that money with your future financial or retirement goals. Folks, I really, really push on this one. I've, I've just seen it open a lot of eyes when meeting with clients and when they partner with us and we start to then consolidate all of these old accounts and they're able to see their financial picture in one location on one screen and not having to go to all of these you know, different locations, how it really helps them view not only where they're at today, but helps them view and understand where they're at today. Not only that, but also understand how much, let's say you're in retirement, how much income then that you can start taking from these different accounts, as well as if you're looking to pass on a legacy or do charitable contributions, it just brings it all together. Number 10, if you are retired or if you are approaching retirement, let's just say you're five years away from retirement, now's the time to create your retirement plan. You've worked really, really hard to save your money, right? So if you're five years away from retirement, understanding when you can retire and being able to make that transition with comfort and confidence, or if you're in retirement, right? Creating that retirement income plan and marrying that up with your investment plan is what helps give you that license to spend. You've worked so hard to save it, put together the plan to give you the license to spend it. So that's number 10 is creating your retirement plan, but specifically your retirement income plan that marries up with your investment plan. And here we go. I got a bonus for you. Number 11. If you're not sure which one to pick, you're not sure how to tackle these items, maybe your goal is, I just want to make financial progress this year and I want to take some actions. You've talked about a lot of great stuff, Scott. The bonus one here is maybe it's time for you to start working with a financial advisor. Maybe it's time to take that next step. And if these aren't your area of expertise, that's okay. It's time then maybe to partner with someone where it is their area of expertise. Now, I'll say if you, you want to look at, you know, to see if we'd be a potential fit, go to lifemoneyshow.com, lifemoneyshow.com. You can click on the work with Scott button and that'll take you through the process to see if we're a potential fit. 
the process that we go through to help our new clients make an informed decision on whether or not we should partner together. I hope that you found this list to be of value and benefit, and I'm going to go back to what I said up front. I know it was a list of 10 items. Narrow it down. Pick one, maybe two, but just give yourself that one thing to focus on and find that word to call it, right, that, that, you're, that triggers in your mind that says, boy, I want to get this done. I call them projects, right? My project for the next 90 days is X. So what's your project for the next 90 days? Or maybe you want to put a month time frame on it. But while your 2022 resolution might be, yes, I want to make financial progress and I want to set myself in a, a positive direction financially, narrow that down to one thing. Take this list, narrow it down to one thing, and what is it that you want to start on or get accomplished over the next 90 days? I hope you're finding this podcast to be of value and benefit. And if so, and you wanted to listen to additional podcasts just like this, subscribe on your favorite podcast player as that way you'll get notified as we continue to come out with additional podcasts each week to help you build wealth and reduce your long-term tax picture. I look forward to our next conversation to continue to help you live life today and be financially confident about your tomorrow. Siren's Financial Group is an independent financial services firm that utilizes a variety of investment and insurance products. Investment advisory services offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC. AE Wealth Management and Siren's Financial Group, Inc. are not affiliated companies. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Siren's Financial Group, Inc. is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein, provided by third parties, have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Siren's Financial Group, Inc.